Welcome back to the Lyra introductory series as we explore the Lyra game uh, through a series of chapters focused on different abilities that we're adding to the system. In this chapter, we're going to be uh, leveraging and expanding the Lyra inventory system, which uh, we will probably break down into multiple parts as there's a lot to explore here. And then there's a lot of enhancements that we can walk through. Um, so without further ado, let's jump into the Lyra inventory system with a short overview of the various elements, where they exist on the various actors and how they are leveraged um, to create an inventory system. So if we jump into, let's start with the player controller. So I just created uh, two actors, one the Lyra player controller and one the Lyra character uh, as a way to just visualize the elements that um, are accessible inside of each one. So these are just sort of uh, more educational classes for me to remember all the various functions. And so when we look at the Lyra controller, there's a couple of things and I've just classified them here. So the first thing is they've defined a series of helper functions that allow you to quickly get from the player controller to the player state from the player controller to the ability system or to the HUD. So there's some basic helper functions that allow you to navigate these classes that are highly interdependent. Um, the Lyra ability system is actually stored on the player state. Um, so this is sort of a pass through function that gets you first the player state, then the player state gets you the ability system. So there's some core uh, helper functions there. Shooter core plugin then adds components to the controller. So the controller starts with basically no components. And then when shooter core plugin is initiated, the first thing it adds is a Lyra indicator manager, which just uh, is a component. We're not going to talk about it, but indicator manager is added. Then shooter core plugin adds the Lyra inventory manager, which is the one that uh, we're going to spend most of our time in discussing. It also adds the Lyra weapon state as a component. So these components are all added directly in the shooter core plugin. So when the plugin initializes, those are added to the controller. Then there's a Lyra experience set standard components. Um, it adds a few more things to the player controller. It adds a Naira numbers pop up, which basically is the numbers that appears above a character's head when you hit them. It adds the quick bar. So the uh, bottom right hand corner quick bar is added through that experience. And then it adds a nameplate manager to the controller to manage the other various characters in the level. There's also some world subsystems. Um, so there's a Ly Lyra game phase subsystem that you can access uh, from any of the classes that basically allows you to understand where you are in a phase uh, of a game and the team subsystems that allow you to understand you know, which team am I on, which team am I, is my target on, etc. So those are the basic elements of the player controller. Then if we go over to the character, uh, it has the same helper. Uh, so we can get from the character to the controller, character to the player state, character to the ability system. Um, it contains a health component, which I have not fully explored yet, but it has a native health component as well as the camera uh, manager, the mesh, the usual stuff that you'd expect on a character. Shooter core plugin adds the equipment manager. So separate and distinct from the inventory manager and the quick slot manager, there is an equipment manager to manage any items that are equipped or unequipped by the character. The experience set, adds a nameplate source, which is a sister component to the nameplate manager that was added to the player controller. And again, we can access our world subsystems from here. Now, there was an interesting thing with the player state, <clears throat> which is, oh, and sorry. And as a reminder, in our previous video, we added <clears throat> a climate component <clears throat> through that plugin on top of the character. So, uh, Chapter four added this climate component to the character, which manages our climate effects. Now, when I tried to create a blueprint class of the player state, it actually crashed the engine. 
uh, the player state is looking uh, for a game state in one of its uh, post init checks and it ends up crashing. So I couldn't create a blueprint like this for player state. So I did the next best thing, which is I got the player state and started to pull off some of its components. So as mentioned, the player state has the ability system on it. So there's a direct pull for the ability system. Player state controls both a squad ID and a team ID. So that is the source of record for what squad you might be on and what team you might be on. Uh, note that most of the example I've seen has only used the team ID, has not actually used the squad ID. You can, of course, get the player controller. Um, they have an interesting uh, client-only broadcast. Um, so this would be for notifications, accolades, anything that is not game dependent, you could broadcast um, on the player state just some basic notifications that will spruce up the game. And then an interesting element down here in these uh, tag or tags, these nodes, where they've crafted a, a add stat tag stack, which is basically counts of tags to give you numerical values. And so you have an add stat tag stat and a remove stat tag stack, and you can specify what tag you want that to be on and how many counts you want to have on. They're using this for uh, ammo counts, how much ammo is in the um, in the gun, uh, how much spare ammo you have. Um, so these are ways to add values to a gameplay tag. Uh, and then of course you can get the actual uh, count off of that, or you can just determine whether or not it has uh, a stat tag. So stat tags are added and removed on the player state, which is largely tied to the ability system. So the character comes native, we added the component, the player state includes these elements. And then if we go to the player controller, um, I wanna go a little deeper into the uh, inventory management component. So as we said, shooter core plugin adds the inventory manager to the player controller. And you can get any of those components by just doing a get component by class. You specify the class you want to get and you'll get uh, a reference back to it. So the inventory manager then allows you to do a couple of things. Um, it first, let's go down here first. It first allows you to add item definitions. And so an item definition is a class. These are the, um, the IDs. So all of the assets that they were creating around ID pistol, ID shotgun, those are item definitions. Um, they actually will create and return an item instance object. So I pass in a definition, it creates an instance inside the inventory manager, and then it returns me the reference to that instance. Um, so I can add an item definition and I can test whether or not an item definition can be added. Some I may only want to constrain to just one copy and not multiple copies, such as the pistol. So definitions are one directional. They go in, they create an item instance, and then they're basically gone. They're not actually stored inside the inventory manager. When you do get the inventory manager, <clears throat> you can get all items. And from this point, we're talking about instances. So it'll return an array of inventory item instance objects, or you can ask for just get the first stack, which will return the very first instance that it finds inside the inventory manager. So inventory instances are the in-game representations of the item definitions, which are defined largely in the, in the editor. So you can uh, get the, get all, get one, you can add an instance. So if I have an instance, let's say I'm moving inventory from one inventory manager to another inventory manager, I can uh, find the inventory instance and then basically add it to a different inventory manager. That's an option I can remove. So once I find one, I can remove it. So I can basically add and remove uh, inventory items using the add item instance and remove item instance on any given inventory manager. And then off of the instance, you have fragments. Um, and this is really where it gets interesting because 
any given inventory instance can have many fragments. Um, and you typically pull the fragment by find fragment by class. And then from the drop down, you can pick whatever fragment you want. Now, in the standard game, the quick bar is a fragment, right? The, um, the pickup icon is a fragment. The reticle is a fragment. Um, the stat is a fragment. Those other fragments are ones we're going to be adding. So a fragment <coughs> allows you to define assets that are contained on an item and then reference. So for an example, let's just look over here. You basically end up with an item definition, which is fed into an inventory manager that generates an item instance. Any of those item instances can be added and deleted from the inventory manager and can have any number of item fragments. So what that means is you can have a fragment. So let's just pull off two fragments. So if I pull off the uh, quick bar, then I'm going to be able to get things like the quick bar icon. I think that's what it's called. Uh, Display name when equipped, close enough. So I'm able to pull off a fragment, fragment specific information. So if I instead say I want to pull, uh, let's just use my skill. So let's say I have a skill tree and that skill tree has a, uh, a prerequisite. So I may have multiple prerequisites. It might unlock uh, other skills. It, it will likely have um, an icon or, or, sorry, it might have a description. So get the skill description. So depending on the fragments that we create, we can actually further segment an item into what it is. So if an item is a resource um, or a recipe or a skill or an ability, it can have different elements. And so in this example, I'm showing that if I pull off the fragment for the quick bar, um, you'll get certain attributes. And if I pull off the fragment for a skill, you'll get other attributes. And that allows the inventory system to hold multiple types of inventory while still treating each inventory item uh, as unique. So that's a little bit of a, a walkthrough on those. We're going to then be using these nodes as we take the base starting inventory system that Epic provided and then cloning it and enhancing it uh, with new fragments and basically cleaning up and, and finishing and polishing some of the inventory systems, such as dropping items, et cetera. So hopefully this gives a base foundation of the item and inventory system where it exists on the player controller. And then we'll be moving into the next uh, section where we'll start to manipulate the base sample project that uh, Epic gave for a lot of it. Thanks for watching.